dense networks of small cells. And if we do that right, we will have higher speeds with our wireless networks than we have ever seen before. And I think that is what 5G is going to look like. And I think we need to get moving because the rest of the world is already on it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, stay watchful, stay vigilant, stay sober-minded. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless. To broadcast the entire Earth, it takes two kilowatts, two hair dryers. Now a microwave oven uses a thousand watts or one kilowatt. Here's the damage one kilowatt can be done by somebody when they take a magnetron out of a microwave and turn it into a ray gun. This is just a small example of a low-tech weapon running on 1,000 watts. Then you have these things here, these huge towers of death. Now each row in this tower, an array, or a set of dishes or rectennas or whatever you want to call them, is connected to a cable with a maximum power output of 300,000 watts, or 300 kilowatts. That's 300 microwave ovens. We base that conservative estimate based on the gauge of the cabling that's running up to one of these arrays. They're estimated at 300,000 watts per cable. Those aren't fiber optic cables running up to those arrays. It's a thick copper gauge transmission line quality cable running up those towers. Now if there's 10 cables, that's like 3 megawatts of power. And these cables are out there to output power to the magnetron, not for data transfer. That's an important point. These cell phone towers are weaponized. There's no other reason to have this much power running up the cables. It isn't for data transfer. Now, FCC regulations limit normal transmission per array to about 400 watts. To put that into perspective, one watt from your phone can go 25 miles to the nearest tower. A 1,000 watt magnetron on a stick can blow shit up. And these towers have a 300 kilowatt power line running up to each rectenna. And who knows, there could be an amplifier at the top of these towers that steps up the power even more. The point is here, ladies and gentlemen, is that these companies like Lucent and Google could turn up the juice at any time and nuke a town. They could nuke the entire country without any war. It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. Cooked your eyes like eggs. And you all need to understand these are military weapons. These are assault frequencies. If you garner nothing more than that, that's what you need to know. It's microwave radiation warfare is what this is. Talking about post-human society. That's right, you heard that correctly. Post-human, after human, when man merges with machine, when man will be no more. That is their end game, to wipe out humanity, where resistance is futile, that kind of thing. That's what they're thinking about. That's what they want to bring into the world. And that brings us back to what we were talking about yesterday. The weaponization of cell phone towers. To recap that discussion, a cell phone tower is a giant microwave oven on a stick. Cell phone towers use a magnetron or an oscillator like a microwave oven to make microwaves. That's how they communicate. Radars use the very same technology. That part that's beaming into the dish is a magnetron just like a microwave oven and just like a cell phone tower. Cell phone service is still spotty. Companies like Verizon are using temporary microwave technology. <laughs> Companies like Verizon are using temporary microwave technology to help people connect. It's kind of interesting when cell phone tower workers are telling you that they have headaches, that they have brain cancer, that they have all these health issues throughout the day where they get these headaches. or For our bodies or our minds. This is cyborg reality now within our cities. We're going to talk about the 5G, but I'm just going to read this. Uh, the emergence of a planet-wide electronic communications grid connecting the thoughts and feelings of billions of people and linking them to rapidly expanding volumes of data to fast-growing webs of sensors being embedded by millions throughout the world and to increasingly intelligent devices, robots, and thinking machines, the smartest of which already exceed the capability of all of us in performing a growing list of discrete mental tasks 
and now already surpass humans in manifestations of intelligence that we as humans had always assumed would remain the unique province of our species.